All right, ClubWWI.com members. Uh, it's a big week here at Club WWI because we're being joined uh, by not only one of the most decorated athletes in professional wrestling, someone with international experience, uh, but one of the, of the most respected trainers you'll find. Guys, the one and only Squire himself, Mr. Dave Taylor. Dave, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to talk to me here today. And, and before we even get started, why don't you just let everybody know how things are by you and, and what's going on in the world of Dave Taylor. Yeah, uh, things are a little bit quiet at the moment. Um, I've just been in England for a month. I was wrestling for All Star Promotions and uh, I did a trip to Germany and Holland while I was there. Uh, everything was great. Uh, I did some training sessions in London. Um, I think I've got an autograph signing in July up in New York somewhere. Okay. Um, but apart from that, there's not a lot going on. There doesn't seem to be a lot of independent work around. Or if you want pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm sure you can wrestle everywhere. It's just a matter I of... Wrestle, uh, I could wrestle every night of the week for free. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to be paid for my services. So. It, it's getting rough. I mean, we hear that from a lot of guys, too, that in, in the United States, it used to be this hotbed of places to wrestle, and now it's, you, you got to find not only places, but even when you find a place, you have to find ones that are reputable, and it makes it even harder. Yeah, well, I worked for some guy in, uh, where were it, Chicago, when I first came on the Indy Circuit, mm -hmm. and they gave me a bouncing check, so I've been uh, very skeptical about the independent scene around here, you know what I mean? Uh, you know... Uh, not very happy about that, you know what I mean, but, yeah. you know, what can you do? You know, you trust the promoters, you go in, they're going to pay you, they tell you they'll give you cash, and then they give you a check. Yeah. And then when you get in the bank, you don't go through, you know, so, well, no more checks <laughs> for me. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it's like that, too, not only, one of the things that come up, not only dealing with kind of crooked promoters, the kind of, you know, these fly-by-night uh, amateur-style promoters, but unfortunately, it's also becoming something with trainers, too. We hear from a lot of people that so many guys, if they have an Internet connection and, uh, you know, a garage, suddenly they pretend they were a former wrestler. Yeah, I mean, what, what justifies someone to be a trainer? Yeah, right. <laughs> because they can wrestle, they can train people? I don't <laughs> think so. And a lot of them can't wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's, uh, I don't know what makes someone to be a trainer. I would have said at least 20 years in the business first before you can be allowed to train anybody. Absolutely. But, not nowadays. It's, if you can put a headlock on, uh, you class yourself as a trainer. <laughs> so. Well, it, it was tough, you know, uh, back in the day. You had a kind of a different situation because you actually broke into the business uh, through your family. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, through my family, yeah. yeah. You, you were trained by your uh, your grandfather and your dad? Well, my grandfather and my father, yeah. That must have been... Uh, Kind of, kind of a big step for a lot of guys, you know, to get to get into the family business and have it be something that uh, is as hard to really break out as as wrestling is. It must have been uh, tough, kind of first getting your foot in the door, and uh, sometimes family goes a little bit harder on you trying to make sure you have what it takes. Well, yeah, it, I don't think there's anything worse than being trained by your father, <laughs> 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 because you know what it's like when you're like 20 years old, eight, 18, 20 years old. You know everything, yeah, or you think you know everything, and. Unfortunately, your father doesn't know nothing, or so you think so. <laughs> Man. Uh, but it was the best place to start. I mean, now, looking back on it, you know what I mean? When I first started, I hated every minute of it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but I won't say I went through what the guys are going through now. I mean, I, was like, I went to the gym twice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then uh, I was stuck on the road. My mm -hmm. father just said to me, right, you're on the road Monday, start Monday. I went, what? Wow. He said, yep. You can put the ring up and wrestle. And that's how I started. I went for 10 days to Scotland. <laughs> I've, never, I've never wrestled in a ring before. I'd only been on a mat. Oh, my God. And uh, that was it. I was in it, you know. Wow. Well, uh, you had... Go on. I'm sorry, I was going to say, you had, you had actually had an amateur background. Yeah, yeah, well, I went to like five, six years first, yeah, we're British amateur champion, yeah. It, is it difficult to make that transition? Because in amateur wrestling, the job is really to, to truly out-wrestle out your friends. Sometimes in, in pro wrestling, it's, you know, not, not as... Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it is actually, it's very difficult. Um, you know, the first thing you learn in amateur is don't go on your back. <laughs> and the first thing you learn in professional is take a bump and land on your back. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, that's what amazes me about such people like Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar. Well, I mean, them guys are phenomenal, phenomenal, you know what I mean? It's the things that they can do from being such a world-class amateur wrestler. You know, you know, 
it's unbelievable how they uh, adapted to this business. You know, Absolutely. it took me quite a while. No, I can imagine. And plus, one of the big things that I don't know if, if a lot of fans realize, but I, I don't, I don't know if, if Scotland was the case or if it was all of Europe. But I remember uh, in in Europe there was there was a big contingency of using rounds during, during wrestling matches. Oh yeah, with all rounds. Yeah, when I first started, yeah, five minute rounds. Yeah. Oh, man. Five minute rounds in England. And if it were a championship match, it were ten minute rounds. Wow. And uh, then in, in Europe, it were four minute rounds. In wow. Germany and uh, places like that. Did that change? Did, like yeah. ten four minute rounds, you know. Well, does that change your approach? Like, I mean, uh, obviously psychology in different matches. I mean, it, it probably takes a little bit of adjusting because you have to kind of, you know, plan out the match a little bit different when you, when you know you're going to have to take a break after four or five minutes. Yeah, but it, it tells more of a story with rounds. You know, you, you, have, you have a chance to make a story. You know what I mean? If the heel, you know, in the round, end of the round, you know, the heel can stay on top of you and get warnings, you know. And, mm -hmm. and you know, nowadays it's just like, what do you get, four or five minutes? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it's a long match, ten minutes, yeah. maybe on house shows you get 15. But back then, you did 20 minutes, 30 minutes every night. Man. I mean, every time I wrestled Finlay, we did 30, 35 minutes, you know, every every night. You know, and I'm same with Regal, you know. I was going to say, that's, that's where you learn, you know what I mean? It's, it's, you know, then you get to WWE and it's like a whole different... Kale of fish is just like, well, we've got four minutes, <laughs> and that's with entrances, <laughs> you know. No, totally. Yeah. I was saying most matches today, if WWE had rounds, I think they'd, they'd all be around, and that would be <laughs> just you want that. Well, that would be, I mean, I know they've got a sell excitement on TV, you know what I mean, it's different on house shows, you know what I mean, you get a bit more time, you know what I mean, and you can slow it down a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, but really, on TV, it's like, you're ignoring the public. You know what I mean? It's just you get in and do that match and don't give a shit what the public say. Or yeah. do or what anything. Don't acknowledge them. <laughs> Whereas I learned, you know, like, work the people. You know, they don't work you. As it is nowadays, I think the audience is working the wrestlers. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen matches where the audience will start shouting boring. The next thing, somebody's up the top rope doing a backwards somersault, breaks his leg and, you know, because the people have said he was boring. If they shout boring at me, I'll snap my someday and uh, stay there and say, no, this is boring. <laughs> you know what I mean? Make them appreciate everything else. Yeah, and then, then, then they'll be quiet. You know what I mean? They don't run you. You know what I mean? It, could, could it just be that, 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 that people today, cause I find that a lot of wrestlers don't, don't really have the same relationship with the crowd that guys like you did because the opportunity, even in training, doesn't exist too much anymore where they teach people to really work with the crowd. So many things are so rigid that uh, sometimes they don't know how to get that balance of, of getting the crowd to be into what you're doing as opposed to just trying to do everything you can to please them. Yeah, well, to start with, it, it starts off, it's, it's too fast. Everything's too fast, you know, everybody's got to get their shit in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what they say, you know what I mean? Well, that, that's wrong. You know what I mean? It's, you got to entertain them people. You know, and it's a fine art. You know, you've, you've got to know. You know, you can pick on somebody, you can... There's all sorts of things you can do, you know what I mean? But nowadays it's just like a lot of the guys are what we call deadpans. No facial expressions, just... Just go through the motions of the match and that's it. Yeah. You know, uh... They used to be quite a lot in England. They used to call them Wiganers. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. all the guys from Wigan were all like shooters, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've got no inspections on the faces whatsoever. They were great, great athletes and great wrestlers. But uh, they no expression on the face, you know. Yeah. Uh, they just go through the motion. <laughs> well, it's kind of a, it's ironic, too, because it seems like back before the days of really good camera angles and camera work, everyone used to really go out of their way to tell the story with their faces, and now with, with cameras yeah. zooming in on them two feet away, they're, they're sitting there as if they're bored as hell. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I watched, I watched, you know, watching Raw last night, I watched uh, Randy Orton, I mean, Randy Orton's got everything. He's got the facial, he's got, he's got everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, uh, I mean, I'm watching his facials last night on TV, I don't know who told him how they're doing, but they're, they're absolutely marvelous. Yeah. Well, he just looks, and he looks as good, which I think, which I think works for him. Like they found the perfect persona to put on him because yep. he looks like what he's pretending, like what he's portraying on TV. Yeah, yeah, he looks like a killer. He looks like a nasty killer. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it looks so, great. So you do still watch? Do you, you watch the shows regularly yeah. now? So. Yeah, I watch it. Yeah, yeah. What did you think about uh, Donald Trump last night? Strange. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's always the same. 
same thing. Bring a celebrity into the business, and you must always put them over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I think, what were it in WCW, that David Arquette came and made a world champion within two weeks. <laughs> yeah, remember that. <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking to myself, why, why don't we put ourselves over? Yeah. You know, it is wrestling. You well, know, and all we do is put, I mean, if we bring a basketball player, you know, uh, any, anybody, we always put them over for some reason. And then they leave, and then here you are, and you got everybody to... So, you know, I mean, it's like Big Show putting the boxer over. Yeah. You have that... I mean... And then he's got to get his credibility back, you know, with people as Big Show, you know. And then what is he going to do? No, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I don't, I don't understand it, why, why they always do it like that. Always has been and always will be. Yeah. You know? No, yeah, even back in the day, I mean, there were, there were celebrity crossovers going back way back. I think the, the weird thing is because they, they, they leave, you know, so yeah. it's... Oh, the, yeah, they're only there for one show, for a big payout and one show, and uh, then they've gone. You know, but that's the way it is. It's a strange, it's very strange business. I mean, I've been wrestling 35 years, and I don't understand this. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> well, what's really weird to me, and I, I, I've noticed this through the years, is it used to be uh, where, where kind of athletes from other businesses would come in. They had um, Alex Karras, I guess, came in, did something years ago with the Crusher and the Bruiser. They had Mr. T and Lawrence Taylor, all athletes, big guys. And, you know, they put them over, and you can kind of maybe say, well, they're real, you know, fighters or whatever. But yeah. Kevin Federline, David Arquette, you know, yeah. Jay Leno, it makes no sense. Guys like that aren't. Yeah, I totally understand that. that no. Uh, that's the way it is. I mean, you know, it's, it's the wrestlers that are supposed to have the egos. Yeah. I don't think it is. I mean, these actor guys that come in the business, I don't think they'd do it unless they were going over. Yeah. You know, that'll be the part of the deal, won't it? Yeah, yeah I'll do it, but i got to go over. I just don't get it. <laughs> and it's the wrestlers that are supposed to have the egos. Yeah. So. Well, you brought up WCW, which, uh, which is one of the first times I really got a chance to see you when you were at the Blue Bloods with, with yeah. Bobby Eaton. Uh, WCW, I mean, a lot of people in, in hindsight have always critics and people, oh, WCW is this, it was that. From you, your experience in WCW, what, what, what would you say overall uh, was your feeling about working there? Well, I liked it there. It was, it was good. Uh, there were a lot of chiefs, mm. you know, a lot of people telling you what to do were getting big money for doing nothing, um, which were the biggest mistake. There were lots of guys getting loads of money and not even working. Mm. Um, that's what killed you, I think. It was a great experience to work there. It was not like as stressful as WWE. I mean, WWE is just oh, so stressful. I mean, you could have a hundred great matches and then one bad one, and you're as good as that bad one. Yeah. You know, at least in WCW they let you do a little bit of time in, you know, when you did work and that. And uh, it, were, it were good, you know. And then especially it was good to have that competition against WWE. Yeah. Well, that was a whole different, I mean, it, it almost feels like the, the entire business has completely changed since WCW went away. Well, it does, it certainly has, I mean, you know, what amazes me is WCW had like 3 million viewers, and WWF at the time had their 3 million viewers, and when WCW finished, WWF viewers did not double, Yeah. which you think they would, they yeah. just stayed the same. I mean, I, I've been walking around the streets with Regal, and... Uh, People have said, oh, Steve, how are you doing? Are you still wrestling? They remember him from WCW. Oh, my God. Not from WWE. So then people never watch WWE. Wow. So there must be something in it. I mean, I don't... At one time, I think the wrestling in WCW were a lot better than WWF. Um, but then it changed round. While I was there, it sort of like got worse in WCW and went better in WWE. <laughs> Is that like around the mid-90s or the late-90s? Yeah, and, uh, you know, when it started going down. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think uh, Vince had got better guys in that and were putting more wrestling on. Yeah. And then uh, w, uh, WCW had started to do more gimmick stuff, you know, like with the NWO, which were great. I mean, it was great, but I think it might have gone on for a little bit too long. Yeah. But you know what surprised me? Cause I, I kind of forgot looking back. I, I was watching some old Nitros, and with the NWO, I, I was surprised because I didn't realize how quickly the group had gotten human. I mean, it was Hogan, Hall, and Nash, which was, you know, kind of a cool thing. And then yeah. next thing you know, there's the 50 guys in the NWO, and yeah. some of them don't even have names. Yeah, that, well, that was true, yeah. 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 I mean, I was there on the night uh, Hogan got out of the limousine. It, what, it did to on a beach pay-per-view? Mm -hmm. um, nobody knew it were Hogan. I mean, no, 
nobody in that back, in the dressing rooms, knew that Hogan were in that limousine and he were going to join the NWO. Nobody knew. I mean, it was, that were one of them stands out in your mind, you know what I mean? When the ring just filled with garbage, people throwing it in there and everything, you know? Yeah. I mean, that wasn't one of them, one of them like, when the heat is dangerous heat. Yeah. I mean, me and uh, Paul Virgil, we uh, were working together at back in the WWE with me before they let me go. Mm -hmm. And uh, one night Finley came up with the idea, you know, like he's an agent. He said, why don't you sing God Save the Queen? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, to start with, I don't even know the words of God Save the Queen. I said, but, yeah, we'll do it, yeah. So we went out. We actually, like, interrupted the uh, American National Anthem. Which oh, no. is a dangerous thing to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we didn't know at the time, you know. Uh, anyway, we go out, sick of hearing this uh, national anthem. Listen to this one. So we only know the words like "God save our gracious queen." But luckily, that we didn't need to know anymore oh, no. because the noise was so loud, you could not hear what we were saying. No. And then I think it was the major boys did a run in on us. Yeah. And it was just like the biggest thing. I, it was scary. The heat was scary, you know what I mean? I, I said to Burgess at the time, I said, ooh, ooh, oh, this no. could be a little bit dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, that's awesome to hear because I think, you know, I, I interview guys, like, you know, you, you talk to uh, Scanner Akbar or Mr. Fuji and I tell you about getting shot and stabbed yeah. and beat down. And it seems like nowadays that doesn't happen too much. So to be able to get people to that level says a lot of stuff to all you're able to do. Well, it's just touching the people the wrong way, isn't it? I mean... You know, in England, when they play the national anthem, nobody even stands up, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In America, they seem to have a, a lot of, you know, about the flag and the, the national anthem and that, you know. And uh, I think Finley did it as a bit of a rib. <laughs> I went to see what happened. Whew, and it, it was vicious, you know what I mean? I thought we were going to start doing that, you know what I mean? But uh, whether they thought it would have been too strong or, or it had been done before with the French guys and that, you know, I don't know. But it never, it never went any further than that. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about, about your time in WWE because your release was, it, it's something that, that, I was just talking to somebody the other day about how WWE, there's so many young guys, I think the average age in the locker room is like mid-20s, yeah. and for some reason they, they've kind of released so many people that could have kind of taught them, like Bob Holly, Val Venus, uh, you know, D'Lo Brown, you, who, who really could have taught, it seems almost nonsensical to me to not have, you know, they call them good hands, you know, somebody in the ring who can, you know, work with somebody who maybe is not so ready. I mean, were you surprised by your release, and uh, how do you kind of feel uh, about that? No, I wasn't surprised by it, because I, um, I stood up in a meeting and uh, said a few words. Oh, really? And I knew as soon as I said it that that the way my days were numbered. Wow. See, the thing, well, with me and Paul Birch, after Regal had gone to Raw, and uh, the woman with Drew McIntyre, uh -huh. uh, but before, before the Drew McIntyre thing, I was with Paul Virgil. And we were doing the tag match thing all over. We did like five months on house shows. We even went on, we went from Smackdown to Raw. And went down, we went to South Africa with uh, Raw. Um, and worked there. And nobody knew who the hell we were. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we were on Raw. And, and we haven't been on TV together. But the heat we got was tremendous. In fact, in, um, what was it? I think it was uh, Durban. Durban, we got that much heat. Uh, Ricky Steamboat said that is main event, main event material. He said, I'm going to tell them this is main event stuff. Because one night we had to work, uh, it was an outdoor show and it looked like it could rain, so they put like Randy on and Cena and that on the first half. Okay. Ended up sticking me and Virgil and the, uh, the Highlanders on last. Okay. So when we walked to the ring, it was just like silence. I thought, oh, God, here we go. Well, within five minutes, they were trying to. Hello? I'm sorry, I, you'd yeah. like, after yeah. five minutes? Yeah, within five minutes, they were trying to kill us, you know, in <laughs> South Africans. And, uh, you know, Steinberg said that were unbelievable. But, uh, you know, we had a meeting, you know, the, the, they have a meeting every, every, about every month, all the guys got the meeting. And they said, you know, we want people to stand out, we need people to get heat and stuff from like that, you know, and I just got a bit sticky there and it, so I stood up and I said, well, right, what's wrong with me and Virgil? Uh, and they couldn't answer me. Wow. I said, we've been in all the house shows, we get tremendous reports. I said, I've seen some of the reports. I said, I've been told some of the reports. I said, the agents are all there to tell you. And they said, well, yeah, uh, um, uh, uh. I said, well, you know, I mean, I went on for a good ten minutes. Everybody 
his checking balance, congratulating me, well said. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, will you send me a check when the fireman... <laughs> 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 I know that he's going to gonna come. And then I, I didn't work, for, I think I worked one more time then. Yeah. Or oh, just a couple more times with that Drew McIntyre. Yeah. And then that were it. I didn't work for like three months and then they let me go. Wow. But it were inevitable because they want you to speak up, but they don't want you to speak up. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I mean, it was a great relief when they let me go. You know, the stress is phenomenal, the stress that's there. But, uh, I mean, I miss it, obviously, you know what I mean? I'd like to be back there, but... Or training the guys down in Tampa, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. I'm sure I've got somewhere to offer them <laughs> after 30, I think 36 years now in the business. Well, I mean, you've worked with everyone. I mean, you, you did you did a hand even, uh, I guess, when Deep South was working with them, you were training in Deep South, was that yeah, right? Yeah, I was Deep South, yeah. Well, I was at Deep South, and when, when I got to Deep South, I started there. Uh, I watched all the guys, and I made a little speech. I said, well, looking at you guys, I could be the first one out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and within nine months, I was on the road, and they were all still there. Man. <laughs> so, That's a good feeling, though. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah, I think MVP left a, a week before me at Deep South, he was on the road, and then a couple of months after that we were in a tag match, and uh, I said to MVP, looked at me and said, wow, he said, if Bill DeMont could see us now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> how, how was the training, I'm training with Bill, because uh, I, I interviewed Bill right after uh, the, everything that kind of happened with, that, yeah. with Deep South Wrestling, he seemed like, like this guy, he had such an enthusiasm for the business, and when you, when you talk to him, you kind of feel that. Uh, oh yeah, he did, yeah, I mean... He was a good trainer. I mean, he was strict. Mm -hmm. I mean, I must admit, he was very strict. Um, but he said what, you know, when he wrote about the boys, you know, the guys used to say to me, what has the, what's Bill said about me? He said, I'm the shit. I said, look, whatever Bill said, it's what it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He used to write reports every month, and they were always bang on. I mean, I used to read them, and I thought, how, how, does, he spend the how does he find the time to write this? And he'd be there at 7 o'clock in the morning, well, 7 at night. And he didn't need to be. Yeah, I mean, he worked really hard there, you know. It's a dedication. Yeah. Well, that's, that's one of the questions, too, because, you know, he would gotten some criticism from people. But one of the things that I, I hear from, from interviewing a lot of trainers, you know, whether with WWE or outside of it, um, is that nowadays the way kind of the system is set up, we're talking about not being a lot of independent work, a lot of these guys don't necessarily go through years and years and years of traveling the road before making yeah. it. It's kind of, you know, next thing you know, I'm, I'm in Florida Championship Wrestling, and to them they think they're in WWE already. So right off the bat, they, they kind of feel like they know it all. Yeah, well, that's, that's the trouble. I mean, I used to say, Bill, you know, I used to say, well, first thing we should do is when we start in the morning is make them travel 300 miles. <laughs> <laughs> get them, get them, get six, sat in a four-seater car, travel 300 miles, come back, and then we'll start working out. That's, that's a great idea. idea. <laughs> That's what you did. And, and I used to say to them, look, you guys are getting paid for this. Yeah. I used to have to travel, you know, like 300 miles at the show, put the ring up, work, for maybe $10. Yeah. <laughs> but less, you know. But, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a hard system to be in. Yeah. Because I wouldn't want to be in them gyms all day long, picking bumps and that, but them guys are. You know, it's a different hardness than what it used to be. Yes. Like, I couldn't do that, but they maybe couldn't do what I did. You know, it's a different type of thing. It's almost like a different different kind of person is attracted to. Because one of the things that I've noticed through the years is that, uh, you know, I get a hold of, of people that, you know, wrestled in, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and, you know, they, they continue to wrestle. They wrestled before they got to WWF, they wrestled after they got to WWF, and now it kind of seems like a lot of guys, you know, they get into wrestling, and then when they're done, next thing you know, they want to be on a reality show, they want to be on a sitcom. It, it's just a different style of people that... Uh, that are they yeah, more the they're the only one wrestling at the top. Yeah. You know, they were, like, you know, they, they start in WWE, and that's it. Once they, get, once they get fired or let go, they don't know how to get a job anywhere else. Yeah. Um, and they don't really want it, neither. Because they didn't really want to be in the business to start with. They just wanted to try and make some big money. Mm. You know, but like, uh, most of the, all the guys now up there, they've, they've all worked their asses off, you know what I mean? Batista, Cena, Horton, you know, I mean, uh, I had a little bit of a hand in training, all of them. When I, when I was first there in, what, 2000, when they were in Louisville. Mm -hmm. um, but they have to work their asses off, you know what I mean? I mean, they, when you're on the road for the WWE, I think this week they've just come back from Europe again. Uh, yeah. They work their asses off, you know, it's hard work. 
Well, I think a lot of people have noticed that, too. That's one of the things that, that is kind of different. I mean, the, the, everybody kind of has to know how to wrestle nowadays because if, you know, on the pay-per-views especially, you know what I mean? They, they want to kind of make matches go a little bit longer, and you have to show something different than what they see every day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they can all, they can all go. Every single one of them can go, you know. So, I mean, my hat's off to them, you know what I mean? Absolutely. But, like, when, when like, the guys down at FCW, I mean, like I used to say, I mean, deep south, um, right, you're going on the road next week, just forget everything that you've ever learned here. Because <laughs> it's like starting all over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. It, it's just, they want different things. They want you to do different stuff. So I said, that's what you've got to do. You've got to adapt to their way of working right now because here is different than there. You know, so that's what you've got to be able to do. Also, I mean, there's so many people. That's the, the other thing, too, that might make it a little confusing for some guys is that, you know, trying to figure out exactly what, what is needed. Because, I mean, there's so many kind of chefs kind of stirring the pot, you know, and always at the Vince McMahon, but well, at the end of the day, you know. That's it. The, the, you, they'll say to you, we want, we want you as a character. And you say, well, what do you want me as? We'll tell you when we see it. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, they don't tell you what they want. You've got to produce it, and then they'll say, that's it. Well, that is it's virtually impossible. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, they might say sometimes, one year to do this, one year to do that. Like with Drew McIntyre, the boy on the road with me. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like his mentor, manager type, trainer thing, you know. And, I, and they asked me, what is he like? I said, I don't know, I've never seen him. They said, well, he's from Scotland. <laughs> I said, yeah, but I've been here 12 years, <laughs> you know. You know, he'll have been 10 years old then, younger. So they said, well, what do you think of him? I said, I don't know, I've never seen him work, I don't know anything about him. So they stuck him straight on TV, not just straight away, he'd only been here a week, he'd only been in the country a week and they put him on TV. Yeah. And his matches weren't bad, but they didn't like it. So they sent him to FCW, he's been there for the last 18 months. Man. But he thought, he came and they put him on TV, he thought, wow, this is it. But, you know, it's not always, you know. No. Well, that's a difference now, too. I mean, it's, but it's like that almost with, with any form of entertainment. I mean, there was a time, you know, it, it, in the 1980s, if you were on a TV sitcom, even if it lasted a, a year, you were on different strokes, people knew you, like, for years. Now, reality shows, I don't even remember who was on last season of Survivor, and they were on prime time once a week on CBS. I have no idea. Oh, yeah. there. It's very red. I get recognized. Um, really? I will do it by real hardened fans. Uh-huh. Uh, but people say, oh, you're a wrestler. I say, yeah. Well, what were your name? I'll say, Dave Taylor. Oh. I used to be partners with William Regal. Oh, right. Yeah, but remember the partners with William Regal. Because they know, know William, you know what I mean? Because he's been around a long time. But then, then they'll, they'll remember then. But uh, it's very rare I get recognized, you know, unless they're real hardened fans, you know. Well, it kind of seems, too. I, I run into a lot of people, and what, what always kind of surprises me is it's, it's people who don't, we don't watch anymore. Everybody used to watch. It kind of seems like, oh, I used to, whatever happened to Jimmy Snook, I used to yeah. watch Lex Luger. You know, I mean, they remember the 90s, they remember WCW, but you know, anything from the last five years, they might know John Cena's name, but it, I find that there's less and less people that you run into who, who are regularly watching. Well, uh, what it is now, I don't think they watch it religiously every week. Mm -hmm. I think they might watch it once a month. You know, they might just catch it as they're flipping through, they forget what channel it's on, they're flipping through, and they're just, oh, right, wrestling's on, yeah. Uh, I don't think... There's as many as used to be that watch it religiously every Monday, Tuesday, and I think, what was it now, Thursday and Friday? So <laughs> every, every day, man. You know, every they just day. catch it now and again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I mean I'd, been, I'd been on TV for like 12 months with, with Regal, and I was in England, and at the show, people didn't know who I was. <laughs> you know, and then just thinking, well, they obviously don't watch much. Well, it's yeah. so much to follow, too. I mean, it yeah, kind of... Yeah, there is, yeah. And it just, to, just to only follow that, that's why I think it kind of hurts TNA a little bit, because I used to watch WCW and WWF, and it was kind of two different companies you watched them, and now, since WWE is like, it's three companies in themselves, and then yeah. there's TNA, it's like, it just seems like so many stories you have to follow, it just gets kind of, it's hard to keep going, especially when you have to wait a week in between each brand. Yeah, well, that's it, yeah, 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 you don't know what's going on, there. I mean, well, there's that much going on, it's like, a little bit too much. <laughs> yeah, everybody's got something going on, every match has got something some history to it or it's going somewhere else, you know. So it's, it's hard, yeah. I want to ask you about TNA, because I know that you did the, the brief stint with them, um, you know, with, with the team, uh, I think it was Team Britain? Yeah, Team UK, as we call that thing, yeah. Do you, do you watch TNA now? I try to. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> it's a 
total different thing, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, I don't want to say I, I don't like it, but it's, it's an acquired taste, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's a spot fest, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, yeah. I mean, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it to save my life. I, I wouldn't want to do it neither, you know what I mean? But it's, uh, it's different. You know what I mean? I don't like the ring. I, I worked in one of them rings in England, uh -huh. which the horrible. You know, it gets away from the wrestling. I understand they're doing it to be different. But, you know, unless it's the main event, you know, like Sting and that, and uh, all the top guys, they all work similar to what I would. Mm -hmm. But the younger guys, it's just, there's no rhyme or reason to any of it. Bouncing everywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, I can outspot you. Yeah. I can, I can jump higher than you. I can land on my head better than you. Uh, I mean, no disrespect to them, great, great for what they do, you know what I mean, but it's not my cup of tea, you know what I mean? When I had interviewed, uh, I interviewed Bad News Brown years ago, and he had said that if he was in a real fight, the only bouncing anyone's going to do is, like, off the concrete, it wouldn't, <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense. Uh, well, it's true, isn't it? They're only going to take one bounce, and they're going to hit the floor, and then they're going to get uh, getting booted in the face. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it doesn't make any sense. Just punch them in the you know face I mean? and move on. But, I mean, it's good stuff. I mean, if it would just cut down a little bit, yeah. it'd mean a lot more, you know what I mean? That's what I always tell the young guys, you know what I mean? You know, it's like the old thing, like, less is more sort of thing. But a high spot doesn't mean nothing if it's followed by a high spot and followed by a high spot and followed by another high spot. Yep. If it's followed by a little bit of wrestling, then a high spot, then the high spot means a lot more. I mean, I, I worked in, uh, where, uh, it was Philadelphia, is it Chicago? Okay. Yeah, yeah, Chikara, yeah. That Chikara thing, right? Yeah, the, uh, the everyone jumps around. Yeah, well, oh well. Yeah. They were like Jack in the Boxes, you know what I mean? <laughs> Me and Johnny Saint go in the ring. Johnny Saint, 68 years old. Wow. And we did some stuff we did in England, you know what I mean? No bumps involved, no climbing the ropes, no nothing. And people were going, chanting, this is wrestling. Yeah. This is wrestling. Yeah. And me and John looked at each other and went, foo. <laughs> <laughs> After they've just watched 20 matches with people flying through the air and double moon salts and triple moon salts and all that, and we did this, and it was unbelievable. The heat was unbelievable that we got. <laughs> that is, but that's all. You know, that's one of the things that, that has come up a lot is the fact that, I mean, wrestling is something that so many people still love. You know, and then and you hear it from people. They loved it. They watched it back in the day. I love wrestling, the actual art of wrestling. But it seems like everyone from TNA to WWE, they, they're looking for anything but wrestling because to promote wrestling and be successful, well, you're a wrestling promoter. But if you reinvent the wheel, well, then you're a genius. And it kind of seems like everybody wants to be a genius instead of just making money and making the fans happy. Yeah. Well, that's it. It's, uh, I mean, not to count, there was some, some real good workers, you know what I mean? Some real good guys. Uh, and they brought Johnny Saint over, especially for it. He's like a legend. Yeah. He only came back. He didn't retire 15 years. He, he retired long before I left England. Wow. And when I heard he was on that show, I thought, well, I couldn't believe it. And he just looked exactly the same and did exactly the same. <laughs> Man. And we did a 35-minute tag match. I mean, my partners were great. were like Claudia and uh, Dan, um, the Dragon, American Dragon. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. And uh, we were against uh, a Mexican guy. Johnny Sain and uh, the owner of the company. I forgot his name. Yeah. I forgot his name anyway. Um, I mean, it was great. We did 35 minutes and Johnny Sain stayed in there 20 of it. That's, is that, man. He stayed in 20 minutes. And there's all these young guys wanting to get in and do stuff. And they let them all get in and do something with him. And he did 20 minutes and I kept saying to him, Get out, you silly old fool. What are you doing? <laughs> and he said, I can't help it. He said, once I get in there, he said, I just want to go. Wow. That's one of the things too. If you if you if you're good at at the mat wrestling style, you could wrestle forever. I mean, if if you yeah. if you just backflip, I mean, you can't be backflipping when you're 80. But I mean, if you know how to put on a believable match that involves technical wrestling, a believable match. Well, you just prove it by Johnny Saint. I mean, yeah. the guy is only weighs 160 pound, yeah. 70 pound maybe. He's 68 years old, and he just does everything he used to do 30 years ago. That's great. All the same stuff, and people love it. That's the other thing, too, about Chikara that I thought was great was that they do bring in so many guys that the fans, I mean, I remember they, they brought in Glacier last year and things like that. Hey, were they? Yeah, Glacier, were they? Yeah. yeah. It, it's a good feel. It's, it almost feels like, you know, wrestling fans kind of trying to put on a show for each other. There's a lot of guys that you talk about getting recognized. You know, some people, yeah, you run into regular people, Glacier, who, but everybody there, you know, pops big. They remember them immediately. Oh, yeah, yeah. Glacier, there was Al Snow, there was D'Lo Brown, there were quite a lot of guys.
guys today, yeah? Well, they enjoyed you, it, they have a good, good show, you know. You're good. It's just a shame it couldn't have been held in a bigger venue and a lot more people. Yeah. You know. Well, over time, I mean, and also, I want to get your opinion. I don't know if you had a chance to see any of Ring of Honor. I know that they were uh, moving up, moving down a little bit. I spoke to them. I've spoke to them, but I don't know, I don't know what happened. Really? They kept saying, you know, I've like, spoke to Nigel McGuinness. Mm-hmm. And he said, like, they've asked if you'd come in and be, like, some, with him. Like a mentor, bodyguard, minder, stroke wrestler, trainer, you know, all together. You're, like, with him. I said, yeah, I'd love to do it. He said, well, they don't want to insult you with money. I said, look, yeah, what's an insult, you know? I do it because I want to do it now, you know what I mean? I yeah. want to do it, but I need a little bit of money for doing it, you know? Absolutely. Uh, but, no, but I'd do it, you know what I mean? And then I called their writers. Uh, Nigel gave me the numbers and said, call them. They want you to call them. They never called me back. So, wow. I, I think uh, in, in that time, uh, like, Flair went in. Oh, okay. And Bret Hart. So obviously there wasn't going to be much money left for anybody else, will there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, not that my money was going to be anything like that, is there nothing at all, but... Yeah. It's all like, you know, but now Flair's gone, I don't... But I don't know, you know what I mean? There might be a chance. I mean, I'm open to go, you know, no problem, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, they're similar to Shakara and, and, and how they, they kind of have the same... A similar fan base who kind of know and respect yeah. everyone. Yeah. I mean, I, I know Nigel had some time off because they're trying to kill each other. Mm-hmm. You know, and I told Nigel, I said, well, that's your own stupid fault. I said, it's you guys that should have learned. You know, everybody says to me, God, that Finley's stiff. Oh, God, that Finley kills you. Well, I'm afraid they're wrong. Finley knows how to wrestle. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, I'd wrestle Finley every night of the week. I'd never get injured. You wrestle one of these guys, you get a neck, neck broken, one, one move, you know. Yeah. Because they believe to make it look real and things like that is to kick the shit out of each other. <laughs> well, I told Nigel, I said, well, you'd only kick the shit out of me once. <laughs> I said, and that'd be it. It'd be fight. Yeah. Because there's no need for it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of, I mean, it also goes against the whole idea of it. I mean, the whole idea of wrestling is to make it, I mean, it, it, to make it look like you're hurting somebody by really hurting them isn't yeah. doing anything. It's just well, being yeah, stupid. You know, you, you, you see, that's where the facials come in. Nobody pulls the face. Somebody's bending my arm. If they don't look like... You can't see pain. You can't see it. You know, if... <laughs> yeah, make, it happen. make a noise, and this guy's twisting my arm, nobody knows that I'm supposedly getting hurt. <laughs> yeah, you <yeah. laughs> sell it. <laughs> you know, they don't sell it, and the guy who's putting it on doesn't sell it. You know, so... They look like they're, uh, they're wrenching on it. Lost, it's a lost thing. There's a lot of it's lost, you know. It, and there's not a lot of people know it now. You know what I mean? When I was training deep south, you know what I mean? I was thinking to myself, well, if I weren't here, these guys wouldn't be learning this because there's only me, Finley, Regal over here that knows this type of stuff. Yeah. Well, that was a concern too. That's what I was saying before about a lot of the uh, a lot of the guys today now without people to kind of look up to in the locker room. And, and it's hard because they don't really have anyone to learn from directly I and mean, they watch tapes forever. Is, is it cool for you to go to some of these shows? And, uh, you know, a lot of young guys must come up to you asking for advice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I tell you, I tell you what, shock. It shocked me like I couldn't believe it. We were at a show somewhere, I forget where it was, and uh, Shawn Michaels came up to me and said, Dave, exactly how does that cravat hole go? Wow. This is Shawn Michaels. And I said, are you joking? <laughs> he said, no. So I showed him, and showed him the way I and he went, oh, thank you. And that's Shawn Michaels asking me, and I'm thinking, fuck it. I'm, <laughs> wow. You know, uh, but it's, it's getting out of mess. But that's something, too, that's what's funny about it, and it, it, I think it's a testament to kind of him, because you, know, you got young guys, kind of think they have it all figured out, they never approach about it quite. Here's a guy who's, you know, a legend in the business that still, even today, is still learning from, from everyone around him. Yeah, well, you see, the thing is, you say, oh, young guy, uh, do you know that, what I'm talking about? They go, oh, yeah. And then you get in there and they do it. Mm-hmm. And they'll go, well, I thought you meant someone else. Said, well, no, you should have got it right. I mean, Shawn Michaels had been told this move and didn't know exactly... Well he, well, he knew it, but he didn't know exactly. And he asked me, and I went, wow. That's, that's a compliment to me. I mean, that's a big-time compliment to me. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I told, I told Regal, and Regal went, yeah. He said, he's not shy of asking, you know what I mean? He, he'll ask you if he doesn't know. Which yeah. is unbelievable. Young guys, no. Young guys know everything. They tell. <laughs> I know, because I used to be young guys. <laughs> I used to know everything. <laughs> yeah, but I'll figure it out. No, definitely. Yeah. Man. Well, one of the last questions I want to ask you. 
we ask all of our guests the same question. It might be a little tough for you and kind of throws everybody off, but yeah. uh, if you could choose someone, maybe someone who came before you, maybe you grew up watching, maybe somebody who you just haven't been in the same place with, that you say, you know what, I, I wish I could have worked with this person. Who would you pick? Oh. You know, I mean, <laughs> uh, I'd like to work with Cal Gotch. Okay. You know the Cal Gotch from Europe? Okay. And he's that lived in, uh, he's from Belgium, actually. I'd like to work with him to see how bad he was. <laughs> he was really bad. <laughs> but that guy would have killed you. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I worked out with him in Germany, in Europe, mm -hmm. right, submission wrestling. And that guy would have master. But I'd, <laughs> I'd shoot wrestling, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'd like to work with him to see how bad he was a professional, because I heard he was a shit. <laughs> So funny. You heard from so many different people. <laughs> you got to test it yourself. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, oh, God. Sorry. Well, Dave, before I let you go, we give all our guests a chance to speak directly to their fans. So what do you have to say to all the uh, little Squire maniacs out there? Uh, just keep your eyes open for uh, advertising, for shows, because I'm still around. I'm not retired yet. Even though the business is trying to retire me, it's not going to do it. I'm going to keep going. I've still got some for the business, and I can still do it. Uh, I can still get both feet off the ground, <laughs> and uh, I can climb the top rope if I like to. So keep your eye out. I could be in your town shortly. Awesome, guys. We're going to have plenty of information. If Dave uh, is making appearances, you know, feel free to send this over. We'll let all the fans know about it. Uh, Dave Taylor, thanks again. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bill.